Annalena Baerbock, the German foreign minister, has called on NATO allies to increase their provision of defensive weapons to Kyiv. This call for support comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken declared that Russia will be held financially accountable for Ukraine's reconstruction. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urged NATO countries to shoot down Russian missiles if they cannot supply more air defense systems to Ukraine. He emphasized the need for Western allies to increase military aid as Russia intensifies pressure on Ukraine's northeastern, eastern, and southern fronts. During a visit to Kyiv, Baerbock reaffirmed Germany's plea for partners to send more air defense systems to counter Russia's relentless missile, glide bomb, and rocket attacks on Ukraine. Despite some Western support, the delivery of promised weapons and ammunition from NATO countries, including Germany, has been sluggish leaving Ukraine vulnerable. Since March, over 100 vehicles have been donated to Ukraine through the ULEZ program, with about half being sent to the war-torn country. Meanwhile, in Kharkiv, Russia's frequent aerial assaults have caused significant destruction, injuring civilians and devastating infrastructure. The city's mayor, Igor Terekov, was promptly taken to a meeting following a recent attack that hit a residential tower block. In Russia, the trial of theater director Zhenya Berkovich and playwright Svetlana Petrachev began, accusing them of promoting terrorism through their play Finnis, the Brave Falcon. Both have been in prison for over a year and deny the charges. This trial is part of a broader crackdown on dissent in Russia, which has intensified since the invasion of Ukraine. Moldova signed a security and defense partnership with the European Union, becoming the first country to establish such a deal. This partnership, announced by EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell, aims to bolster Moldova's resilience and address common security challenges. Moldova, led by pro-European President Maya Sandu, aims to join the EU by 2030 and has condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Slovakia's parliament resumed work after a brief adjournment following an assassination attempt on Prime Minister Robert Fico. The government, led by Fico's coalition, is moving forward with its policy agenda, which includes ending military aid to Ukraine, overhauling the public broadcaster, and reforming the criminal code. The assassination attempt has underscored the political polarization in Slovakia and Poland, Prime Minister Donald Tusk announced the re-establishment of a commission to investigate Russian and Belarusian influence amid concerns of an intense campaign by Moscow to destabilize the country. This follows the defection of a judge to Belarus, putting Poland on high alert. The head of the military counterintelligence service, General Jaroslaw Strozik, will lead the commission. Ukraine's military struck the Russian missile ship Cyclone and occupied Crimea, though details remain sparse. In Moscow, a court ruled that Russia's investigative committee is not obligated to investigate two attempts on the life of jailed dissident Vladimir Karamurza. Karamurza, who has both Russian and British passports, was jailed for 25 years on treason charges after criticizing Russia's war in Ukraine and advocating for Western sanctions. He has survived two poisoning attempts linked to Russia's Federal Security Service. The European Union announced an agreement to use profits from frozen Russian assets to support Ukraine militarily and aid in reconstruction. The EU holds around 210 billion euros in Russian central bank assets, and the interest could generate about 3 billion euros annually. Most of these funds will go into the European Peace Facility to reimburse EU countries for sending arms to Ukraine, with a portion allocated to the EU budget for reconstruction projects. West Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen urged German bankers to enhance compliance with sanctions against Russia to prevent efforts to circumvent them. Speaking in Frankfurt, Yellen emphasized the need for banks to take stronger measures to block Russian evasion attempts, warning of potential secondary sanctions that could cut off their access to US dollars if they fail to comply.